Random Inks Productions presents the Credible Nerds Podcast with your hosts, Justin and Mark. What's up, my nerd? Welcome everyone to the Credible Nerds Podcast. My name is Justin, and I'm not here with Mark this time, but I am here with my fellow nerds, my fellow credible guys, Blake and Nathan. How are you guys doing? Guest nerds. Guest nerds. Guest nerds. I like it. (laughs) Hey, everybody. Hey, how's it going? So we Gotta take advantage of that video. (laughs) We're here to talk about Morbius. Um, There's been a lot of talk about Morbius lately in the fan sites, fans, people who saw the movie, people who aren't fans, you know, everybody went and saw it and they have an opinion about it. And we have our opinion. We're going to be talking about that with you guys here today. So thanks for joining us here. And if you have any opinions yourself or if, if you follow along and want to comment on what we're talking about, definitely follow us on social media, make a comment on the comments here on the YouTube video. And let us know what you thought of Morbius, what we thought uh, we will get into here in a second. But first off, um, we want to invite you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, We're just getting going with new original content. So we'd appreciate that if you subscribed and continue to check us out. So we want to thank you in advance for that. But for for us, for me in particular, Morbius, that's a, a character I wasn't, I knew of, I had heard of. Um, but I really didn't know anything about till I watched this movie. I knew he was in the Spider-Man universe, you know, one of his enemies, I guess, one of his foes, but that's about it. So what about for you guys? Did you have an idea who Morbius was or what were your, um, what was your knowledge coming into this movie? I, I didn't, I didn't know Morbius very well at all. Kind of what you said. I, I knew he was part of the, the spider verse, but where he fit in. And, uh, I, I didn't really know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Same for me. Uh, I, um, I thought I knew who Morbius was, but then I watched the, when we watched the movie, uh, I, I'm sure it's different than what the comic book uh, canon is. But, uh, mm-hmm. I realized that I may have been thinking about a DC character. <laughs> oh, okay. When I when we afterwards, I'm like, you know what, the, the character I have in my mind, I'm pretty sure that's a DC character. Yeah. Okay. So we all pretty much knew nothing about him, but uh, we learned a lot. We got this is an origin story story for Morbius. Um, it's kind of confusing in the sense that you know why why isn't Spider Man in this movie if they're foes? Um, but we, as you watch the movie, you kind of figure out that this is how he turns into um, this guy with super this vampire with superpowers um and a little backstory on morbius is that he as far as the the non-movie stuff he's a character that's owned by sony pictures along with spider-man and so sony's trying to create their own spider-verse with their own spider-man characters and so that's why we got the venom movie uh the first one and the second one they're trying to jumpstart that. And then Morbius is kind of along those same lines. They're trying to establish their characters to, you know, introduce into the Spider-Man lexicon. And so that's where they're coming from. So he's not officially part of the Disney Marvel stuff. Um, so they're trying to you know beat that up and establish that. But... Um, You know, the history is that he's an anti-hero. Him and Spider-Man have been foes along with Blade. Um, Blade is going to have a resurgence here in that they're going to make a new Blade movie here pretty soon. So I don't, but I think Disney Marvel owns Blade, the rights to Blade. So I don't know if there'll be any crossover there. So it's it's all kind of jumbled together at this point. But uh, historically, um, Morbius has been uh, a living vampire he got his powers, as we saw in this movie, We, we got, he got his powers by doing some experiments with a bat and injecting himself with a serum, and that's kind of how he got his stuff. So um, as far as the 
the characters go Michael Morbius. What do you guys think of that name? <laughs> Morbius. Well, yeah, I, I wasn't even sure where more the Morbius thing came from. Um, so yeah, um, it's you know in in uh, superhero fashion, uh, you know, typically you'll have uh, an, a, a a name where their like first name and last name are the same initial, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. and or mm -hmm. uh, you know, or kind of rhyme. So, uh, but yeah, I, I'm I'm fine with the name. Uh, Morbius, but I did think the origin story was interesting, um, and uh, not not in the fact that it was um, your tra as traditional as some of our other origin stories we typically see from some of our comic book characters, but but then also kind of somewhat in line with a Spider-Man type of origin where you know he bitten or in this case some gene aid. Uh, DNA gene therapy, so to speak, was done mm -hmm. so that he could help himself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, yeah. So we got, we saw Michael Morbius as a child. He has a blood disorder, and he gets, you know, he's in this facility. The hospital's taking care of him, and then he meets this new friend who, his name is Milo. Or he calls him Milo because the kids just kind of come in and then go, come and go. So he just calls him Milo. And so, but he strikes up a friendship with this Milo. So we get an origin story with these two. Um, they're, they're friends as kids. They grow up. They go their separate ways. Um, Michael Morbius ends up being a doctor to try, try and create a cure for this blood disorder that they have. And Milo, he ends up being a rich person and comes into some money or earns his money or whatever happened. They didn't really explain that. But he funds the research. So they're still friends. They're still interacting and that sort of thing um as far as that part of the story goes blake what how did, did you feel like that was explored enough developed enough okay, what were your thoughts on that first part yeah so that did feel like it felt like a pretty short movie to me overall mm -hmm. and i think usually we see these movies being over two hours and, and this one was pretty short of that and and so that friendship like it was believable but it didn't seem like they built that very much that was mm -hmm. like a very quick quick situation and then more morbius moved on to some you know school for the gifted and and uh and that was that but it but they created this lifelong bond um i i, I think uh some of the you know kind of some of those human elements it felt like they just kind of hurried through to get to the next the next plot point yeah so you know, pretty believable, but it, it felt a little bit rushed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was kind of my thoughts as well. Is you know, we come from Spider Man, No Way Home. <laughs> the third one was <laughs> the third Spider Man with Tom Holland. That was what two hours and fifty minutes or something, right. forty minutes. It was long, and then we come to this, the next Marvel film. That at the end, it, it's chronologically after that movie because part of that Spider Man movie appears in this one at the end. And so chronologically, this is next, and it was like super short. And like you said, it lacks that development yeah. in some of the story elements. So um, it did. It, it it did seem short at the end. However, I didn't necessarily walk out of the theater feeling like like I wanted more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you were okay with it being short. I was okay with the length of the movie. Yeah. <laughs> you kind of wonder on those if they. Uh, well, it felt like Venom was kind of like that, too. They both had really similar tones, mm -hmm. just like, hey, we're laying down this story. We want to, I, I don't know. It, they both seemed similar, a little bit shorter, a little bit choppy, a little bit, you know, skipping from action sequence to action sequence. And, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, yeah, the, it, it, it'd be interesting to see if there was a longer cut that they in the two and a half years that they've been waiting to release this, that they cut it down or, or, or what, but yeah. Yeah. And I, I thought it was, you know, you bring up good, a good point that the re release date of this was obviously extended out or pushed back. And, uh, you know, as we were walking out, we commented or you commented Justin that, that, you know, this was obviously during the heightened time of COVID and perhaps there was a thought that, Perhaps there was a thought that releasing a, a, a movie about uh, bloodborne pathogens or diseases was, yeah. especially coming from bats, yeah. uh, was maybe not necessarily a good idea. Yeah. With all of that uh, kind of, you know, 
those uh, conspiracy theories that were out there when right. COVID was first coming out. Yeah. So it was scheduled uh, initially to come out uh, July 10th, 2020. You know, COVID became a, we went into lockdown in March, yeah. Yeah. April around there, 2020. Yeah. So yeah, right after that. So they pushed it back to, I think the fall and it kept going on. The pandemic kept happening. So they pushed it back another year and then another half year. So didn't come out till just recently. So and I think that's part of why I, I wasn't ex- excited for this film because it's like I was interested in seeing it initially and then it like same thing with Wonder Woman 84 and Black Widow. You know, they Don't say Top Gun. Top Gun. <laughs> Don't say Top Gun. <laughs> so, you know, all these films, they kept pushing them back and then my excitement or my interest kept decreasing as I went along. And yeah. Ultimately, it's interesting that all those three movies that we've seen, even Eternals is in the, part of that group. Yeah. They weren't s- spectacular movies, right? So that's interesting. Yeah. It's hard, you know, with um, Endgame, you know, and now we're in the chapter, I believe, four or mm-hmm. a series phase four. of phase four of the, of the Marvel movies. Obviously, they're trying to uh, ride the momentum of the popularity of those series mm-hmm. and uh, with all of these. Uh, new movies that are coming out it's kind of perhaps we're dealing with a little bit of um, of uh, a drain and uh, and uh, to kind of reboot uh, you know a series or, or, or a phase into this whole world when we just you know kind of ended on this huge climax and almost feels like maybe a, a break would have been good but mm-hmm. it's but they have to build or set up these stories if they really want to eventually what I presume to be the uh, the big introduction that we've all kind of the culmination of all of these whether it's Disney Plus series or these others that we've been watching and that is uh, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse yeah yeah and that comes out first of May so next month a couple yeah. Of weeks yeah and that'll I think that will determine you know how good is this next phase going to be. Because Eternals was supposed to kick it off, but it wasn't really tied into what we knew before. There were some references, but it wasn't tied into it. But Doctor Strange will be tied into what we've known before with those other movies. Yeah. So, yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that works out. Um, but, yeah, the whole thing with, you know, the bats and Morbius using their DNA to infuse himself to cure his blood disease... It works, but then it, there comes with some consequences, which is he craves human blood. And I thought it was an interesting... There were a lot of good things about this movie. I think just bringing it all together was what suffered, but there were some good parts to it. One of these parts was that, you know, he's a doctor. He's taken the Hippocratic Oath. He'd do no harm. He needs to save people. But yet then he's infused with this desire to you know, kill people and drink their blood. So it's this inner conflict that he has. Um, so for you, Blake, did that, did the movie portray that well enough that it was believable? And you're like, well, yeah, that would be a hard thing to do. Or what, what were your thoughts? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it did a pretty good job with that. I mean, in the beginning I thought, well, he just killed like 10 people. (laughs) (laughs) It's pretty hard to come back from that, but then they kept it. It's almost like they were talking to me like, hey, Blake, remember, those were mercenaries. Yeah. Yeah. Those were hired guns. Yeah. They didn't have families. They were horrible people. <laughs> you know? They definitely made a point to try to, to, try <laughs> try to soften, the soften that or, and pull that over the audience's eyes, especially yeah. Yeah. with the uh, FBI agent. And he's like, hey, those were mercenaries. I really don't care if those people get murdered. As long as you don't kill anybody else. <laughs> yeah, don't kill a, a nice person. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. just kind of like, okay, I'll buy that for the purpose of, of this movie. Fine. Yeah, that's right. Whatever. Yeah. But, I, you know, if I can bring up, what did you think of the of the FBI agents? They, uh, when, I, when they first walked on into the scene, um, I was not expecting uh, those two characters. And Ty- they didn't seem to really go together. Tyrese and... Uh, <laughs> yeah. it was, yeah. they, I, how believable were those two as as FBI agents cuz i have to admit i wasn't that convinced and they they seemed like a couple of keystone cops to me in some regards and yeah. and uh and not a whole lot of uh 
a great detective work going on so yeah. much as just like that's a good point just kind of like following you know the trail of the the, the, the obvious bodies. trail of bodies yeah. but not a lot of you know interesting work which you know i i i i found i didn't find them very believable mm -hmm. they were entertaining but yeah like you said they're not very adept at their job i would say they were there to push i think they're to push the story along to yeah. create um a reason for morbius to to be on the run yeah there, yeah through, through most of the movie so yeah and, and he had to have some justice for what he was doing you know, I can't just go unnoticed and no one cares. No, of course. Um, but it seemed like those two, especially uh, the one was supposed to be the comic relief mm -hmm. of the whole movie. The whole movie, yeah. That was basically it. Yeah. And it just was like not, and and some of it wasn't funny. <laughs> yeah. And some of it yeah. was just not believable. But, but, but Tyrese, he's set a pretty high standard yeah. in, yeah. in his movies, so... <laughs> I thought Tyrese did all right. Yeah, he did it. good for what his role was. But yeah, I was fine. Yeah. So yeah, there's that conflict, and then the next conflict that's set up is his buddy Milo is funding everything. He wants to see the results. He's like, "Hey, you're Morbius. You're you're doing better. You're walking. What what happened? Did you come up with a cure?" And he tells him, "Well, I did, but I can't let you know because it's it's not good enough. You know, it's it's a bad cure or whatever." Yeah. So, you know, that creates conflict between yeah. the two friends. It yeah. kind of kind of felt like they went through that so quick, though. Mm -hmm. You know, it, I mean, that conversation took like 20 seconds. And then like an hour and a half later, Milo not only has taken the serum, but he's killed. It, it just felt so fast that he's all of a sudden killing all these people. And uh, you talk about internal conflict. It, it didn't seem like he struggled with oh, it yeah. too much. No, it was pretty was quick. No, this this movie was definitely not what I expected. I I, I and that's fine. Uh, but but you know we always of course anticipate certain plot points or ideas or storylines. And for me, the idea was more that this would be a, a Morbius would be more conflicted with wanting to like transition from his previous life, and now he has this this newfound power. And he wants to use it to fight good or fight for good and fight evil. But when he does fight evil, he is tempted or conflicted with making sure that he doesn't overstep that line of justice where this was felt like more like just a vampire movie. And mm -hmm. it's talking about, um, you know, and, and then the, the, the artificial blood, the blue blood, I couldn't help but feel like I was watching the colons and uh, eating deer and, and living off of wildlife versus real vampires. Yeah. They're they are full strength because they live off human blood. Morbius, he's not full strength yet because or can't really be full strength because he lives off his artificial blood that he made. And he did go right from the artificial blood to human blood pretty quick. He didn't even he didn't yeah. even try the animal blood. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's a good point. But that that whole, I'm like, I, I thought that was kind of, this is kind of like, well, if I drink my artificial blood, I'm not at full strength. Yeah. But yeah. I'm like, I'm this not. reminds me of another movie. <laughs> I never saw that movie, so I don't know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> but you read the books. <laughs> you, know, you didn't want to read the books. I like it. It's okay. You can edit that part out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, it is a vampire movie. I was, I was surprised about that as well as, how vampire -y it was with the the plot story, but also the special effects, I guess, of them running around and with their vampire faces in yeah. their normal clothes. It was that was one part that was just weird for me. Like yeah. I mean obviously the whole movie's weird, but <laughs> in a weird movie that was the weirdest part. <laughs> this is just yeah. the the vampire part. Yeah, they kinda like turn into smoke or something and yeah. speed around and kill people and you know transform their faces transform the, the echolocation with e the ears yeah. was like creepy yeah. weird creepy that was yeah the 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 look of the characters was definitely very bat like mm -hmm. you know and and that was you know the confusing part for me are are they like bats or are they vampires vampires are undead they're not really bats but these these characters are supposed to be more like half human half bat 
mm-hmm. who drink blood, but but the, I mean, where are the uh, I can understand them giving them like maybe some you know super strength and giving them the ability to to do echolocation or, or mm-hmm. seeing certain things like that that bats can do, but like almost like disappearing and and moving across the room in in a as you say a puff of smoke that that seemed kind of like i wonder what the source of that is up into including um uh one of the aspects that i also was like i don't think vampires uh, uh, i don't think humans could do that even if you're half blood and that is flying on wind when, yeah <laughs> in the subway tunnels yeah and the aerodynamics isn't there <laughs> that just is not there yeah but yeah I, it's that's the comic book element i guess that comes into it but yeah it was it's just kind of maybe they needed to explain it more um i think they explained the echolocation well enough mm. just the visual was weird yeah but everything else they didn't really explain that he could just do it and you had yeah. to accept it so yeah that that part i was fine with it was just the flying and the the very yeah. like misty smoky poof from one side of the room to the other kind of it was a cool visual it, it was cool yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well but yeah with the flying he's kind of like well, what's going on here? <laughs> yeah. Like something. And then next thing you know, he's like flying like a pro. Yeah. I mean, I, have you ever tried to, have you tried to ride a bike recently? <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, it, it was, it was interesting. There, there were a lot of times when I was watching the movie throughout that I just kind of like my head kind of turned sideways and I was like, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I think it's those things. They just kind of add it up after a while. And you're like, hmm. You know, it wasn't bad. It was just it was off to, yeah. for me anyway. Um, but I, and I didn't really buy the relationship between him and the nurse either. I just, I there's a lot of this movie that I just really struggled with. Conceive, you know, I just didn't, I just wasn't sure that the audience would really buy into, and I, I certainly didn't. Uh, you know, from the from the FBI agents to some of this, you know, his 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 abilities to the relationships they just seemed forced and, and not natural and not yeah. realistic yeah and to blake's point earlier you know it was a short movie and that's if they would have spent 15 20 minutes on a couple of those you know a couple minutes here on all those things maybe it would have been better yeah. overall so but uh the kind of the climax of the movie is milo and uh morbius michael with their full powers, battle it out, duke it out in the city. Um, and at the end, the the nurse that he is in love with, or has interest in at least, um, oh, they also had this doctor friend, right, that kind of when they were little was helping him out, doing the blood transfusions for him. And he ends up coming along with the story as well. And he's taking care of Milo. And he shows up after Milo's taken the serum and Milo ends up killing him. Um, and they had been friends for 20 years, 30 years. Right. But he ends up killing him. So Michael finds out, he goes there and finds out that he's dead. And while he's gone, Milo has gone to his girlfriend, the nurse, the doctor, she's not a nurse. That's right. (laughs) The the doctor. And he kills or wounds her so that she dies. And he comes back and is unable to save her. But in, so they fight over that, and then at the end, um, obviously Michael wins and vanquishes Milo. And then at the same time, well, before that, he had bitten the doctor to drink her blood to get the power to fight Milo to finish him off. Right. What did you guys think about that part where he <laughs> drinks so, the blood of his girlfriend? Yeah, I mean, that's like like you say, that, that connection was a lot deeper than... Then I guess I I got the feel for I yeah I I don't think I can get people to stick around after five p.m. for five minutes the people I work with you know let alone um, let me drink their blood so I can go have a vampire fight yeah yeah I I wasn't sure if there was supposed to be a romantic connection between those two but I, I never saw anything Mm-mm. that would have made me believe that there should have been or would have been. They hinted at it, but never showed it. But so I you don't know. I always, yeah, I, you know, I, I, my impression was that they were more just, you know, good, 
good friends and and uh, colleagues, but nothing beyond that. Didn't yeah. they kiss eventually? Like yeah. they kissed at one point, yeah. right? Yeah. There towards the end on the rooftop. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, that was that was an interesting scene. And I and in my mind at that scene I was like, please don't suck her blood and kill her <laughs> so that you can have the strength to defeat your foe. <laughs> and then it happened. And then that's exactly what happened. Well, I think Michael's thing was he liked her, but he always saw himself as defective and not good enough for mm. her. And she probably didn't care uh, too much. Um, and then he became whole and powerful. He's like, oh, now, now I have a chance with her. And so then that's when they kissed. And, yeah. and then things went south after that. But um, if there at the end, she's dying and she says something like, make it count or something. Yeah. And she make bites my, his lip. His Mike, lip. My, make my death count, I think. Yeah. But I think she had blood and there was blood in his mouth. But I, I'm, I'm, I, my, my assumption was that was her blood because he just got done drinking it or something like that. No, I thought it was before. Yeah, it was right before. It was a little, yeah, a little drip of his blood, maybe. Like she bit him or something. Or, or did she just bite his or lip? She, either he bit her on the lip or she bit him on the lip. Maybe she bit him on the lip. And then and he went for the jugular after that. Yeah. <laughs> He didn't. He didn't hesitate no. either. He didn't try to revive her. Yeah, yeah. He was just like she's like, make it count. He's like, all right, all right. <laughs> he, he went for it. Yeah. yeah, but they did, and I I didn't pick it up. But as Blake, as you pointed out afterwards, I, that she that that drop of blood it appears to have gotten. She partook, mm -hmm. and uh, and we get the the reveal at the end. Yeah. There. So I think let's get into the end credit stuff for the the end of it all. Um, which I think is just as interesting as the rest of the movie, if not more. <laughs> yeah. But so first off with the girlfriend, um, she is revived. She died, but then she came back. But and that aligns with what we saw earlier when they were testing the bat or the mouse. The mouse died and then it was resurrected, came back to life after yeah. a bit. Mm. So that makes sense. It fits in with the, the story. Um, so she comes back as a vampire. So she's a living vampire as well. And then that's the end of her what we see about her so if there's a part two i'm sure she'll be there and then we get the end credit stuff with um michael keaton reprises his role as vulture from spider-man uh homecoming homecoming and he just shows up well first off we see the doctor strange thing from spider-man no way home where he rips the multiverse thing in the sky mm -hmm. and the multiverse is yeah. bleeding through mm -hmm. and <clears throat> he he comes through that apparently, supposedly, and he shows up in a jail cell. Because at the end of Homecoming, he was in jail right, yeah. for what he had done. Mm -hmm. So I'm assuming that's why he ended up in the jail in this reality, this Morbius verse. Yeah. Makes Morbius sense. Venom verse. But then they don't know who he is, though. Yeah. So then, you know, I think when, you know, when the movie ended, we didn't talk about the movie. <laughs> we yeah. spent the entire time talking about that one yeah. scene. Yeah, and how what, does this all fit together? How does this all fit together? Because as you just mentioned, they had no idea who he was. So he didn't replace an existing character. He had to have been a new character. And if he was a new character in this universe, why did he show up in, in the jail? But, okay, let's just accept that for what it is and mm -hmm. because he was in jail in whatever universe he was in he's now in jail in this universe mm -hmm. as he comments i hope the food's better here yeah so then the question i had was is what what is is he the same character or or individual or the universe from the tom holland spider-man or is he uh, from another universe and is more of an evil character because the vulture from Tom Holland Spider Man, I, I, you know, I didn't get the impression that he was evil per se, as as he just was trying to make a living and protect kind of his daughter. Got a, on the wrong side of things in his business and ended up finding getting kind of trapped and didn't really got in over his head and and ultimately made some bad decisions that got him in trouble. But you know, he knows we know at the end there he's. He likes Spider-Man and he, he stands up for Spider-Man. And then this one appears to have kind of a somewhat more of a sinister 
um, persona. That's the impression I got. Yeah. And it could be that he's been sitting in jail for a couple of years and he's like plotting revenge when yeah. he gets out. He's like, I've changed my mind. Yeah. But in this, so then that's the question I have is, is this, does Morbius take place in the Tom Holland Spider-Man movie set or in a different yeah. universe? And like, does this vulture have a wife and a daughter? And yeah. I would say no, because they had no idea who he was or why he was in, in prison so mm -hmm. but is there supposed to be a doppelganger for every single individual in every single multiverse theoretically yeah, yeah. so yeah. But, but they all look different i guess and mm -hmm. with, so know. maybe his t person doppelganger in this universe isn't in jail but does exist but he's just yeah doing his thing yeah they didn't know who he was maybe he lives in a different state yeah they don't know or he was killed maybe as a as a child or a young man there you go something like that it's always good to just say they died yeah <laughs> but i think it, it is supposed to be two separate things due to the venom uh, angle right because um, in the first of the movie they the fbi agents refer to the incidents in san francisco which is where venom happens mm -hmm. and then in the movie morbius says for some reason i'm venom I think he's joking around, but he didn't laugh or anything. But he says, I'm Venom. So he was aware of Venom. And so he, that Venom character is present in his world. So I think the Morbius Venom world is different from what we were seeing in the Spider-Man movies yeah. with the Avengers right. and everything, right? But we think or believe that the Venom has been pulled out of the Venom movie verse and is in now pulled into the tom holland spider verse is yeah that correct he went there for a little bit he went and then he came he back came at back. the end yeah. yeah so yeah the end credits for venom 2 had him going over there to their the avengers disney verse and then at the end of spider-man was it the spider-man yeah no so, way home in credit yeah so that's that's a good point i mean yeah, with venom he showed up in the Tom Holland universe, mm -hmm. and then he's there at the bar talking about like, wait, so there's, there's these Avengers, and there's what, and there's yeah. a spy, and I think he even mentioned Spider Man as if mm -hmm. Spider Man mm -hmm. is news to him too, but maybe not. And then at the end, when everything gets gets repaired, then he gets pulled back, and so, mm -hmm. yeah, with this, uh, um, with Vulture. He gets pulled into this new, you know, this new universe. And he's there long enough to build his suit and do whatever he had to do to make that happen. And, and then approach Morbius. But, I mean, if kind of that whole scenario holds true, unless he does something to prevent it, he gets sucked back into, you know, his old world, just like Venom did. Yeah, I, I just don't... That's another point that I'm like, well, he his construction company was had a contract to gather up all that alien technology and that he was turning or making these things His illegally weapons. with them. Yeah. yeah. So for him to, for this person to show up in this universe, that, that would have needed to have been happening or that technology would, he, he would need to have had to have access to that technology to, mm -hmm. to make that suit that he zooms in, flies in that, that end credit scene just, just made me, my head spin because I've got fifteen thousand questions. Yeah, yeah. That, it, it was cool. But... It was cool, but yeah, I, I don't, I don't not quite. I don't know who yeah. we're talking about and where it all came from. Yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. They're gonna have to explain that. I think. Well, there has been talk of three new Tom Holland Spider-Man movies that aren't related to this. What we've seen before, kind of, because at the end of the last one, he erases himself from everybody's memory, basically. Right. Mm -hmm. So maybe there's some aspects where he he's pulled into that universe, or I don't know. <laughs> it's yeah. confusing. But they're gonna have to. Have, the next movie is gonna have to explain how that all fits together. Yeah, yeah. it's just like it, cause it, it, if if it, if every character has a, a twin in another universe, and they're presumably a similar character or the same character, mm -hmm. but that obviously isn't the fact because we have a the Spider-Man and Tobey Maguire's world. 
mm-hmm. is Tobey Maguire, not Tom Holland. So. But they are all Peter Parker. But they is, are all Peter Parker. Yeah. 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 This is the problem I have with the multiverse multiverse movies yeah. and time travel movies don't say anything about back to the future <laughs> yeah it's it's sound it's scientifically sound <laughs> it's legit kill the uh, hitler kill hitler baby theory or yeah. kill thanos baby theory yeah your past becomes your future and your future your past stays your past and it's okay whatever maybe though maybe do- the new doctor strange explains it because it is the multiverse of madness maybe we'll see how it all comes together and at the, I would presume at the end of that movie, the multiverse stuff is solidified, and there's no more this crazy, you know, multiverse hopping. Anymore. Yeah, yeah. At least I would hope so because we've had a year of that, maybe a little bit more, and I just I don't like it. It's a cool thing for a couple movies to tie them together, but yeah, it's a, year, a very what ify thing, right? Yeah. What yeah. if, and then that's fine. Tell a side story what if kind of a thing but then leave it outside of your normal canon now i say that but i also say at some point you're just going to have to maybe just enjoy it for what it is yeah. and not try to figure ex- have everything explained and mm-hmm. just enjoy it. It, it there are other characters there's other universes they have like, different experiences some are the some same people some are not and mm-hmm. it the story is what the story is and and it's if anything it's just a way to f- enjoy and appreciate more storylines of these characters that we we enjoy watching and learning about yeah yeah so as you can tell the end credit scene caused more discussion and <laughs> yeah uh interest than a lot of the movie which is unfortunate because overall i liked it it wasn't my top movie but i liked it but the overall feel of the movie was very interesting. Like you said, we, we brought up that it was more of a vampire movie. It was dark. And I think that's why it was critically panned. <clears throat> Excuse me. That the Disney Marvel movies are always happy and, for the most part, you know, heroic. And this is an anti-hero movie, same as Venom, where they're bad guys, right? Yeah. Basically, they're not good guys. They're not heroes. And so it's it's hard to create a good feeling about a movie with those type of characters. And I think that's why it's so it's has bad reviews on Rotten Tomatoes and stuff because it's not a a hero yeah. movie. I would have liked to have seen him kind of having the 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 inner battle with himself and like fighting crime but mm-hmm. fighting the the desire to overstep that bound and actually kill his and, and drink the blood of of his you know of the, of the criminals that he was capturing and and then maybe he thought it was okay because he's like kind of like a like a dexter hbo tv show yeah. reference right yeah <laughs> like it's this is okay to do this because these are bad people right but but him not doing it and just really really having and and then the 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 doctor girl not knowing yeah. it was him yeah. And then slowly seeing the clues as he gets stronger and gets successful and she starts to realize I think he's this this vampire vampire killer, killer or yeah. or at least person that's going around mysteriously capturing all these villains and then and then at the same time there's these there are murders going on and everyone thinks and it's him but no one has any idea that Milo is has actually secretly taking yeah. and and then we have this big reveal at the end where everyone thinks goes after Morbius and they think he's the killer and Milo comes out of the you know out of the shadows and yeah. everyone's like oh, it was Milo he was the one <laughs> killing Milo all along <laughs> yeah he was the one killing all the criminals he was the one leaving all these dead bodies around not Morbius that that would have been you know a yeah. lot better movie than than what we saw yeah and we did get a little bit of that, but again, it was rushed. So yeah, it was, it was pretty quick, you know. There. It was yeah. just weird. They're kind of like, hey, this is, you know, Morbius has done this, whatever. And then it was like 30 seconds later, they're watching that security video. And they're like, oh, wait, that's Doctor Who, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and then they're in the cafe and they're him and the uh, and they're just kind of talking. And he overhears them talking. He, he like, I don't know if they robbed the cafe or he, but those, those three, those two 
hoodlums or whatever. Mm -hmm. He's just like counterfeiters. Count, yeah, yeah, counterfeit money. Yeah, that's right. He, they're just. He's just like. He just gets up and walks away from yeah. his friend. <laughs> yeah, see ya. I got. I got something I got to do. Yeah. And and he doesn't like arrest. You know, he doesn't like tie him up and leave him for the cops to catch. He just basically says, "I need your lab." Yeah. <laughs> and beats him up and beats him up and kicks him out so yeah. he can make whatever he needs to make yeah um yeah. yeah that was interesting so but the overall feel of the movie was this scary movie there were some pretty freaky parts like yeah. when the the nurse is in the hallway and they get the lights coming on yeah the visuals you know some of the visuals were pretty cool even as they were fighting you know, kind of through the city. It, it mm -hmm. was some, some cool things going on. And yeah. I did like the horror vibe to it, you know. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm a scary movie guy. And so, you know, that was a good touch. It, I think whenever they do that, they are always just a little bit scared to go, you know, All full bore. Yeah. So they're like, you know, like that. It's like, okay, this is a crazy, scary thing. But they were just bad guys. Okay, this crazy, you know, this dark thing's happening. But... Let's try to kind of infuse some some humor to it. Yeah, and it's the wrong kind of. It's like Marvel humor mm -hmm. inserted into a, a completely a different tone, movie. and it it you know kind of yeah. doesn't quite work. Got to just go all the way and and mm -hmm. uh, yeah, see make a thriller Marvel movie like a scary, yeah. just outright scary all the way through. They could, they yeah. could, and and this could have been this could have been that. Yeah, really, yeah. the reality is is this they could have had this whole. You know, uh, 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 movie where they basically made it look like Morbius was out doing all these bad things, and they and then they pull the wool over your eyes the whole movie, and then they have this big huge reveal at the end, and yeah, and we, and this entire time you could have just been seeing people getting killed, and and Morbius could have been like when he turns into a bat, or he gets his powers, or he maybe he he doesn't remember what he does and it just shows you know this thing fighting crime and living parental and then it shows him waking up and every and then seeing the news and he's like and he keeps thinking it's him yeah he keeps thinking it's and they that that scene in the hall was was great it was, mm -hmm. it was really good but yeah yeah unfortunately with that one we had just well i had just seen moon Knight a few days before a yeah. couple days before where they had that same scene yeah, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is just like Moon Knight. Yeah, but it's no fault. I mean, like I said, they made this movie two years ago, but yeah, that's true. But it was similar. And Moon Knight is going that way. It is a thriller. It's yeah. some scary components to it and murders and stuff. So yeah, yeah. yeah but anyways, uh, yeah, so definitely some missed opp I some missed opportunity there. You know, yeah. but yeah. Okay. Uh, so overall, did this movie work for you personally? Like? I mean, I I just like seeing movies these days, and, and there yeah. are so few. I mean, they're starting to release more and more. But um, so, I mean, I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun and, and everything. It had problems, but um, it was it was it was fun fun to watch. It was all right. Yeah, yeah. And like it's it's a movie, and I like going to the movies and watching a movie. And and anytime you go to the movies, it's it's a good time um, usually. And yeah. I I certainly didn't walk out of there. Um, thinking i i with any kind of ill feelings toward the movie more more of anything i just walked out of thinking that could have been a much better movie mm -hmm. but uh but but i had a good time yeah it was fine yeah i don't think it deserves it's like the lowest rated marvel movie on rotten tomatoes or something <laughs> and i've never given rotten tomatoes much credence yeah. so that doesn't bother me but i don't think it's the worst i mean thor dark world is, is it better? Is it yeah. worse than that? The problem is, is that is the one Marvel movie I haven't seen. <laughs> yeah. I, I saw it once, and then I keep thinking I got to give that another chance. After Ragnarok came out and yeah. some yeah. of the other stuff, I'm like, I got to give that another chance. And I got like halfway through it. Okay. Yeah. I can't. I there's nothing about that movie that piques my interest. I don't know why, but I just yeah. I can't. There's nothing about that movie when it both when it came out and then after it came out. Not even Natalie Portman. Not, not even Natalie Portman that I ever want. It just seemed like a filler movie. Kind it of was. Like, it was. And and yeah. I, I think the most important part of that movie was probably what happens in the end, or like Morbius is the post credit scenes is what I'm 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 guessing. But there, I would say the biggest thing that come from that is we get a 
Infinity Stone reveal. Yeah, Infinity mm-hmm. Stone reveal, and it. and we learn well. And, and we Loki, I mean, kind of. There's the character building of Loki. Yeah, yeah. that's true. Isn't it the Loki and origin? Isn't that the one where he dies at the end? Supposedly. Supposedly, yeah. yeah, yeah. Which, when I saw uh, Thor Ragnarok, um, I didn't get the whole recre the play at the beginning of the movie when they're recreating that scene yeah. of him dying. I was a little, I'm like, this is from that, this is from Dark World, and I actually never saw that yeah. movie. Yeah. So but for, I love Matt Damon. As, yeah, uh, that was a good surprise cameo <laughs> there. But uh, I liked Morbius. Morbius was good in some ways. We've talked about it. Some good scenes that didn't kind of go together very well. It was short. They didn't develop plot ideas, characters. So... It felt flat in a lot of areas, but it was still good in some areas. Yeah. They can redeem it with the Morbius 2 or introducing it, him into the next Spider-Man movie. Like Spider-Man has to figure out who he is or something, you know. Yeah. They cross paths. So they can redeem him. I think mm-hmm. there's potential there for a, a next movie. Bring it all together with Venom and him and um, yeah. Spider-Man. So It'll potential. be interesting to see, though, if they do kind of cross over with you know, with the Tom Holland mm-hmm. kind of character, because that's a very, like you say, of you know, you kind of that cheery, bright mm-hmm. kind of Marvel story. Well, Spider-Man's the golly G kind yeah. of, you know, apex of that. Yeah. And then you cross that with, with Venom and, uh, and, and Morbius. That, that'll be an interesting, an interesting mix. Yeah. yeah. Spider-Man and his quips and movie references to right. a blood sucking vampire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That'll be interesting. So there's some potential there. Yep. I think if they use this for what it is, an origin story, a setup for something better then it's, uh, it's a good yeah. step. Look yeah. in my, in the world I live in, it's either absolutely unwatchable <laughs> or it's fine. And, you know, I, I kind of put movies in three categories, and and most of them fall right in the middle. And that is, it's it's entertainment, and was it entertaining? And mm-hmm. if it's unless it's absolutely the worst movie ever, which then it usually will fall into that middle category. With except, and then there's the rare movies that which is what why we're here that you just absolutely love, and that 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 are in that best movie ever category. What's an example of a movie that's a Marvel movie that's in that top category? So for me, you know, like Endgame, um, you know, that would obviously be there in, in both part one and Infinity War. I, I love Thor. I love Ragnarok. I loved I, the first Iron Man. Um, you know, um, those are all. And, and what's part of what I look and, and what I can appreciate a, a criticism would be is is that they're as they both are great movies you know a civil war um and just avengers they then themselves alone can stand by themselves but then of course this is a huge multi-movie uh, connection which mm-hmm. just enhances the story overall yeah. i mean civil war was just uh, um was an amazing movie, especially with the conf- the, the the inner conflict versus not so much fighting a, a villain from outer space, but just per- people's personal demons mm-hmm. and their personal conflicts, and to see the the Avengers divide and, uh, on that, that. I mean, that, that's that was that was a great movie. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. So at our at our house, I mean, Endgame and and the Infinity Wars, those are kind of the best ones, I think. Mm-hmm. But we watch Thor Ragnarok and Ant Man the most three times as much as any <laughs> of the others. You know that's just yeah. a good sun. Those, those are good Sunday movies. They're funny, right? You know, yeah, yeah they're just fun, light, good time. Yeah, those are great movies. Yep. So those are our thoughts on Morbius, the Living Vampire. Uh, I think overall the general sentiment seems to be. It was an okay movie. If you haven't watched it, would you recommend someone watching it if they haven't watched it or they're hesitant to watch it? I would say yes, you should watch it be- if if you're a fan because again, it plays into the into the the, the bigger picture mm-hmm. and uh, and so 
to me, I would I would say you should watch it, not because the movie in of itself is a great movie, but right. it's part of the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, same here. You know, I I liked it. I'm sure one day I'll be sitting around on a Saturday and it'll be on TNT and I'll watch it again. And yeah. um, but it it was fun. It'll be interesting to see where it goes. And you know, hopefully Sony. You know the things that that Marvel's done over twenty whatever movies that that took a lot of patience and time to build yeah. up and and you know you kind of worry a little bit that Sony kind of like the way they hurry this movie along that they mm. try to hurry the the Spider Verse along as well so hopefully they take some care with it and I think there's some some potential yeah, yeah. that's a good point so yeah go see it if you're got nothing going on <laughs> things are it's a slow saturday go check it out uh tell us what you think if if you go see it because we recommend that you go see it and it sucks let us know <laughs> tell us you guys are so wrong <laughs> let us know in the comments on this youtube video or follow us on twitter and let us know at credible nerds uh so we want to thank you guys for joining us here definitely subscribe to our channel like this video and stay tuned for more credible nerds reviews of Marvel, DC, Star Wars, Star Trek, Harry Potter, everything, anything and everything nerdy, right? So we're going to thank you guys for listening, and we'll catch you next time. I will say this. the It was given the choice between uh, Sonic the Hedgehog 2 and Morbius. <laughs> I would have picked Morbius. Yeah. And and Sonic 2 was obviously the premiere was that that week that same weekend and Morbius had been out how many just a week just, just a, a week, week yeah. yeah still would have picked Morbius over Sonic the Hedgehog that's true yeah any so and I think Sonic 2 is like a huge hit right now isn't it? yeah box yeah, office huge. wise making money yeah so but you know anything <laughs> that to appease your children you know <laughs> send them to Sonic and go yeah. watch Morbius there you yeah, go yeah yeah, yeah.